Good morning. Today I'll be covering three items. A uh, request for statewide concurrent seasons, a request to use wildlife management units for the late antlerless only firearm season, and an extension to the DMAP deadline for applicants. Before we get started, I was asked to uh, provide an introduction to myself since I'm a new hire. I'm David Stainbrook, the new deer and elk section supervisor. I grew up in Northwest Pennsylvania, and that's where my family still resides. And I did my graduate work at Penn State University, working with deer management. And for the past nine years, I've been in Massachusetts in charge of their deer and moose program. Uh, when this opportunity, opportunity came up to move back to Pennsylvania, um, be closer to my family, it was great. Uh, but I think the most important factor for me taking this position was the excellent team of experts working on deer in Pennsylvania. And then it's one of the top ranked deer programs in the country. Okay, so moving on to the content for today, our first item is a proposal for statewide concurrent antlered and antlerless uh, during the, fi the regular firearm season. The staff is proposing that the entire regular firearm season be concurrent, antlered, and antlerless statewide for the 14 days. Uh, before we get into this, I wanted to address what folks, many folks might be thinking right now, which is, wait, won't this cause an increase in an antlerless harvest? and then a deer population uh, decline because of it. And I believe this, this idea stems from the confusion and misconception that happened in the early 2000s um, around when the two week concurrent season started. Um, and they believe that's what led to the increased harvest during that time. It was actually the antlerless allocations uh, during the early 2000s that were increased. Um, and that was because the current deer numbers at that time were above the goal levels. And then it was that increase in antlerless allocations in combination with the additional concurrent days uh, that led to the increased antlerless harvest. And that was the plan at that point in time. So in other words, in the early 2000s, the target antlerless harvest was increased. And what we're proposing is that this concurrent season uh, can go forward with no change to the target. Um, so in, in other words, whether there's a seven day antlerless season or a 14 day antlerless season, the goal would still be to harvest the same uh, level of antlerless deer. In this, in this example, that would be the 10,000 uh, antlerless deer that would be your target or your goal of harvest. And so, like I said, the, the target harvest stays the same, but, the, but because you're adding more time, the antlerless allocation would be adjusted. Uh, so since there are more days with the two weeks, the success rate will increase a little bit. Um, and so we don't need to give out as many antlerless licenses to meet that target, that 10,000 in this example. Um, so what changes is the license needed to harvest one antlerless deer. That's the number that changes. So that means that the, the number of antlerless licenses allocated uh, will go down a little bit with a longer season. Um, so this does mean that there will be a lower allocation, but based on previous year's data, there should be enough licenses that all resident hunters should still get their first round selection, um, and there should be more left over after that. Um, the other important point is the statewide concurrent season simplifies regulations. Uh, this is what the current season looked like in the digest this past hunting season. And the, so in this uh, example, it was some of the wildlife, wildlife management units um, in the south central and the southeast section of the state. And this has changed quite a bit from year to year. It's really confusing for hunters um, to try to keep up on all these changes. There's a lot here. Um, and what I wanna show you is if we went forward with this change, it could be as simple as this, just a simple statewide antler and antlerless during the date range. So in summary, the staff is proposing a 14 day statewide concurrent season. The antlerless allocations um, they're going to be adjusted to accommodate that increased number of days. So it's not going to lead to an increased harvest over and above whatever the target or objective is for that particular unit at that point in time. This simplifies the regulations, and it also increases hunter opportunity to be able to take antlerless deer during both of those weeks. Okay, moving on to our second proposal. Uh, this proposal is to use wildlife management unit boundaries rather than county boundaries for the extended firearms antlerless only season. Uh, I wanna say that, that the season, the extended antlerless only firearm season uh, was created 
to provide more time for hunters in the suburban and urban areas around Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. Uh, the late season was originally allowed in wildlife management units 2B, 5C, and 5D, but it was changed in 2013 um, to be only in smaller county boundaries, the special regulation counties within those larger wildlife management units. That change further complicated our regulations and was inconsistent with how deer are managed statewide, which is, which is by the wildlife management units. So the staff is proposing that we return this late season back to the wildlife management units 2B, 5C, and 5D, rather than just in the special regulation counties only. Returning to the wildlife management unit boundaries provides consistent deer management across similar landscapes, and it's how we manage deer statewide. Um, one of the big reasons is the urban areas I mentioned. Um, urban areas are one of the most challenging factors for deer management. And as you can see here, they're distributed throughout both of these wildlife management units, um, 2B, 5C, and, and in 5D. Uh, so the deer management challenges that come with these urban areas, they're not just limited to those special regulation counties, but they're also found elsewhere within that larger management unit. Um, the next point is that antlerless harvests are uh, evenly distributed in both wildlife management units 2B and 5C uh, prior to that change in 2013. Uh, between the special regulation counties, which you can see here in yellow, and the rest of the area that would be within their wildlife management unit, which you can see here in green. And as you can see here, with, between the land area and the antlerless harvest, they're very proportional uh, for both the harvest relative to the land between those two areas. Um, this means that the harvest wasn't skewed to one area or the other. It was evenly distributed throughout. So moving back to wildlife management units, we would expect the same uh, situation to occur now. So in summary, the staff proposes that we return this late antlerless only firearm season back to wildlife management units 2B, 5C, and 5D, rather than just in the special regulation counties only. This change not only simplifies regulations, it's consistent with how we manage deer statewide using those wildlife management units which were designed to contain similar habitats, human populations, and public land areas, and work well. It also provides more clear and consistent boundaries for hunters, and it increases hunter opportunity. Another important note I, note I wanted to make here is that this pr proposed change is not meant to reduce um, or to change the deer population. Um, the antlerless allocations, which are based on goals and objectives, serve that purpose, and those could be changed in the future. Our final proposal today is to extend the DMAP application deadline from May 1st to July 1st. Moving the deadline for DMAP to July 1st is an easy change and it makes sense. It provides more time for applicants to analyze data and that they collect such as pellet counts after snow melt and vegetation data after the green up in the spring. This change will still provide enough time for our staff internally to get the coupons out to applicants before the deer season and applicants can still apply earlier if they're ready. Um, also, this is only affecting the applicants for these programs. Nothing will change for hunters. Um, they'll still be able to get their coupons and, and purchase their licenses or permits before the season. Uh, that concludes our discussion today. Thank you so much for your time, and we're happy to answer any questions.